Welcome back. Stove's on the clock. Stove has a clock. Clock's on the stove. However way you want to word it. Um, this is a new, honestly, I mean, we didn't really plan it to be like this, but I feel like this is just what happens. It's kind of like our new segment, you know, the mm. random sports. It's our second mm. episode of it. Usual host, myself, Grayson Fisher. With me, my South Florida blonde hair, blue eyed demon, Zach Watts. Mm. Um, yes, we are going to talk about sports. It's what we talked about. But first, Zach and I are on another topic. We want to give a special shout out to our dear friend, Matthew Daner. He is mm. on a date tonight. Um, mm. Clap it up for him, you know. Um, hopefully she's a short queen and they, they could be the, the power short duo, you know, that everyone needs. But that got me um, talking to Zach. You know, we just stumbled upon the conversation of dating apps. Mm-hmm. And um, I just wanted to give my little opinion on them real quick. I don't know how Zach's is. We didn't, we purposely waited to talk about this till the pod started <laughs> <laughs> um, because that's how little sports are going on right now. Yeah. Um, so I, if I had to start off, I'm going to start off with, I'm going to go with Tinder first because it's the most popular across platforms. Mm. It has the most attractive females by a mile, in my opinion. I think it has the most attractive females. You don't get any matches or swipes back. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if I'm <laughs> figuring wrong. I don't know if I'm ugly. I don't know what it is, but I've tried it numerous times and it has the best looking girls. But I never get anything. I'll go on like dry weeks on Tinder without mm-hmm. getting a fucking match. Uh, yeah. what what is your what's your input on Tinder, Zach? Yeah. So what I've started to notice with, I guess Tinder. This is the biggest issue I have with it. More so, guys are on there looking to hunt, but girls are on there to market. They're not. They're not on there to really find matches. That's not the game plan anymore. You see the Instagram in the bio? It's just yes. marketing. It's just and then marketing. you go on it and they have like 50K. And you're like, why the fuck are you on Tinder? And it's yeah. just because exactly what you just said. You just yeah. went on her profile. Yep. You're marketing. I mean, hey, game respects game. Maybe we should make a clocks on the stove Tinder page. Just strictly. We'll have like, we were going to do a clocks on the stove nude calendar for sports. But now we're just going to do a clocks on the stove Tinder page. And then just feature all of our athletes. Now we may get banned, but I don't care because, <laughs> you know, maybe if you're hot enough, they just don't care because they literally, they updated their terms to be like, no socials in bio, like no, like certain communications. Like this is a dating app. This isn't for you to like market yourself. And people are like, yeah, I don't really care. They're like, and what it, there's probably like, there's probably like one dude that's hired on like Tinder, like tech support. Like you like message Tinder and he's like, ah, shit. Yeah, I man. just think it, it's so big now that it's exactly what you said. It became another Instagram for girls. Yeah. It literally did. It literally became another social media platform for them. Um. So yeah, that's my that's my thoughts on Tinder. Next, we'll go to the, the solid number two download after you give up on Tinder, Bumble. Mm. Bumble, I think it's the the... the the best name of the three, I think Bumble's a dope name. I think it's a really mm. dope name. And I, I think their logo and their brand is the most like uh I wouldn't say appealing, I would say um aesthetic. Aesthetic, yes, that's what I was mm. looking for. Uh I like it. I also like the concept that girls have to message first. Um, not in the aspect of like I want well, one in the aspect that I don't know what the hell to say. And two, it's we live in a society. And it's like beyond, this is like deep, but beyond dating apps where it's like guys have to do fucking everything first, like, like everything. So it's nice for once a girl like has to show her interest first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's cool. I did watch a TikTok last night on the founder of Bumble talking about how she grew it and it's very illegal. <laughs> she would, she would have like hot girls wear like very skank clothing that said Bumble on it and then send them into classrooms at schools and like oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong class or like purposely disturb the classroom to market. And then they'd be like, mm. what the fuck is Bumble? And like, it's mm. smart, but I was reading some dude say like, that's like super, like it's like illegal to do that. That's like free, like soliciting to school or something like that. Mm. You but, know, oh, I'm sorry, you go, yeah, you go. Yeah, I was going to say, the more we talk about these, I'm thinking of new marketing ways for clocks. So I'm saying the next UFC event we go to, we get some clocks on the stove shirts. I run in the ring and sucker punch, um, Keith, no nonsense, Peterson, and just see what happens. Because then maybe we're like, "What the fuck is clocks on the stove?" Like he just that would blow sh- up. Yeah, I would, would probably blow us. You would go to jail for sure. Oh, jail! That would blow us up. 
I'm not worried about jail. I'm you worried wouldn't about have to hit him. No, no, dude. If you just got into the cage, if you just got into the ring, the octagon, if you just got into it wearing decked out in clocks, you like we would blow up. Like we'd become Joe Rogan. Like I, I was thinking everyone you know, that would get millions of views across hundreds of different platforms, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is clocks on the stove?" And then it's just, I was thinking, you know, my, the least of my worries would be the going to jail part i'm more worried about like if i were to shot fake like a pro fighter and they just like immediately end my life like in like point five seconds think, you think i want to get back to the dating apps but real quick do you think it's <laughs> actually possible to get into the cage no i think there's no way i think there's no fucking way the only there's no way there's you so know, many people around the cage and it's not like a boxing ring where you just jump in you'd have to climb it so unless you're one hopping it, if you go to climb it, they're gonna grab you instantly. I don't think you can I mean, get it. I mean, now that I think about it, have we ever even had an instance in the UFC where they've had to like postpone the broadcast or stop it because someone even attempted to okay, get so in the cage? Fact check me on this, Jamie. But a story that I was told as a kid, I don't mm-hmm. know how to do this. I'm telling you a story I was told as a kid when I was in MMA was that Dan Mergliata got noticed by the UFC to see was refereeing a professional match, like a professional fights for some other organization, and someone jumped in and he choked them to sleep. No, there's a video of it. Yeah, okay, so that is true. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, but in the UFC, dude, because the thing is, the only people that are close enough to touch it that aren't hired by the UFC are the A-list celebrities. Like, and like... Joe Burrow's not even that level. Like, he's still behind a railing. I'm talking mm-hmm. about, like, fucking... Who who do you think could sit next to Dana? Mike Tyson. Yeah, Mike Tyson probably could. No, even he's behind the railing, though, dude. They're yeah. still behind a railing. And I'm not saying the railing would stop them. I'm saying for them to clear the railing, somebody's going to notice that instantly. Yeah. But, I mean, like, even, like, thinking about it, like... Like, when we were at the UFC event, I didn't, like, notice, like, an abundance of security. But on the floor, it's crazy. But also, it's – it's this is what you need to remember. Let's say this – like, it's hard to show, but, like, if the cage is in the middle, it's in the, it's in the middle, right? It's right here? Yeah. Okay. They're sitting not, like, right next to the cage. They're, like, here. And yeah. then there's a railing in front of them. And then yeah. there's a security guard. So they'd have to get by the security guard or get over the railing, not getting caught by the security guard. By that time, by the time he even gets to where the Rogan and them are sitting, they're like, we got a runner, we got a runner. And then there's 15 guys around the cage, like Rogan, Daniel Cormier, like those guys and the coaches, you'd have to fucking beeline it and have it like a, a have fucking uh, Joseph Benavidez, his wife, Megan Alevi, be the one that's, that's by the cage when you get there body her out of the way and then <laughs> one hop you have to one hop the cage because it's fucking 10 feet tall no it's not 10 feet tall but it's fucking it's six tall. feet six, it's six feet, feet tall and it's it's not like a boxer you can go in so you're gonna have to climb it so if you jump on and go to climb they're gonna grab you so you have to fucking knock out security guy no one grabs you sprint to the fucking where they're sitting body and Megan and Levy. yeah and put Megan and Levy, and then jump one hop the fucking cage and then you're Locked in a cage with two professional <laughs> murderers. <laughs> that, that's probably why it hasn't happened, let's be honest. It's not like football where they're like, all right, get away, get away. Like, blah, blah, no, like they're like, if you're willing to fucking fr- like voluntarily get locked into a cage with two of the highest trained hand hand killers in the world, you got go it. Ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. But see, like you would assume, you would assume that fans are that smart, but at the same time, there are plenty of like grown men who have never trained a day in their life over 200 pounds that are like i could handle any 125 or yeah but if they're too if they're a big dude they're going to be too slow to get in and they're not going to climb the cage because mm. daniel cormier will grab them and launch them it does not matter how big they are i don't think dc would even like give like half a shit no no <laughs> I, think, I think the opposite i think if they somehow got to the part of getting on the cage. Daniel Cormier would be one of the first people to do something because he's such a dad. Yeah, probably. Damn. The yeah, new, back, uh, the new Mission Impossible movie is actually just Tom Cruise trying to get into the UFC <laughs> octagon. 
Um, sorry, I spoiled it for all those at home, but that that's literally the whole premise. Yeah, so, back. Let's let's finish up this. Um, let's finish up this. Um, dating, dating app. app. Back to Bumble. So girls are not as attractive as Tinder. Girls get way more matches, and girls get more conversational. Mm-hmm. Um, conversationable. I don't know. Conversable. Conversable. Yeah, something like that. On Bumble, um, I've also gotten a lot of like hit me ups. I hit back and then ghosted. So. Mm-hmm. That's my that's my overall Bumble experience. I like the idea of it. It's just for every, it's like it takes eight. It takes I get one swipe of the Tinder girl for the amount I get eight swipes of a Bumble girl, mm. or opposite. Yeah. One swipe uh, of Bumble for eight swipes of Tinder. Yeah, I'd say my one knock on Bumble is it's a pro and a con. Like obviously, putting the ball in a girl's court first is a nice change of pace. But at the same time, you tend to realize that once you give them the ball. They have no game. It's literally just, hey, or what's up? Whereas, like, guys get a match, and you have guys always sit in rooms and, like, pulling out the note sheet, like, holy shit, what yeah. the line is going to work on the 5-4 brunette. All right, we need to go this personality type. Oh, shit, she's a she's a Pisces or a Sagittarius. Like, we're, we got to change. We got to start over. <laughs> now, how do I morph my personality into, like, a pickup line where she's going to let me hit tonight? Like, that, that's the game. Where I, whereas on Bumble, they hit you up first, and you're like, uh hey, no, like you say hey you say hey back to their hey and they're like oh that wasn't smooth enough i'm like fuck you you started it no it is exactly no no that's a great point to make yeah they start it but their hey is just for you to say hey like start like you still yeah. have to come with the same energy as tinder yeah sometimes they're fun though but those girls are usually a little uglier yeah you know what it is you know what it is the ball really isn't in their court the it's match is sh- in their court no, no 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 it's just a checkup they'll just pass it right back and they'll be like check and you're like, oh shit. And the thing is, is it, it goes away in 24 hours that they don't send a message. But if they send a message and then you send one back and they don't reply, the 24 hours mark's gone. They can stay there forever. Yeah. But now yeah. after a while, it'll go into your hidden because it's like, damn, nothing. You ain't got shit, bro. It's like at least we ain't gonna taunt you with it in your face. We're gonna at least put this in the hidden section, but still terrible. Let's go to our next. Um, oh, very, very, very important factor we've got to establish is what you kind of did with Tinder. Tinder girls aren't really looking to fuck. Bumble, it's like 50-50. Hinge. Hinge is the, the third head of this three-headed dragon. I was thinking uh, farmersonly.com. <laughs> Grinder. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, a little, little switch of pace here. We're switch hitting, it seems. But, Jesus. yeah, wrapping itself is with Hinge. I heard a lot of good things from Connor Menendez, one of our good buddies, but Hinge went on it. Um, don't like the format of it. Don't like, don't really like, I'm going to be honest, I don't like anything of it. Girls come after you way more though. Girls aren't as hot. Mm-hmm. That too. And for my stake, they all want relationships or they want like something. So overall, I had one Hinge experience. If, if, <laughs> and it was not like that, buddy. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me yo, tell yo, you. Yo. All right. My one hinge experience. This is probably the greatest thing of all time. Oh my gosh. I I matched with this girl and like didn't really think anything of it. I didn't like look too deep in the profile. I'm very like photo based. Like I'm just like, you know what? If you if you activate the neurons in my brain, I'm just kind of like, you know what? Let's wing it. Let's go for it. I get to this date. This is a six two Jewish woman. 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 Capital W. I will never forget. I will never forget. We we go back after the date. Wait, wait, used, wait, wait, wait. So you saw that it was a big woman and still chose to, to, to no, 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 no. The photos looked very misleading. I thought she was oh, like, oh, okay. I thought she was like taller, like five, seven, five, eight range. Cause all the guys, like all of like the other people in our photos, were like relative to her height. <laughs> she's just hanging out with the NBA team. <laughs> yeah. She's just hanging out with Lamar Odom, I guess. I don't know. But this is the best part of the entire story. I'll never forget this. So we get back. I use the restroom. I come out of the restroom and she's gone. She's gone. I, like I where, go to like the data. I we'll get to that. I'm, like she followed me into the house, so I know she's around. I'm like, which is at your house? Yeah, and I'm just what? like, oh, oh, so you took her on a date, and now you're back at your house. Yeah, you? now you're back at the house. Okay, I was lost. Yeah, use the restroom. Come out of the restroom. Go to my room. No one's there. I'm like. I'm like what's going on here? And so you like, drove. Right. Yes, and I look outside the front door. Her car's still here, so I was like, "She didn't leave, 
but she's not here. So I was like, maybe she used Donut's bathroom, which I didn't show her where it was. So I was like, okay, knock on Donut's door, open it up. No one's in there. I'm like, all right, this is getting weird. I knock on Zach's door. I'm like, yo, Terry, I'm like, did you see where she go? And I was like, he was like, he was like, no. I was like, I was like, dude, what the fuck is going on? So like maybe like alien abduction happened, middle of date, don't know. Open up my back door from my room to peep outside. She's just smoking a cig in, in the backyard. Like completely <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> but it was at that moment it was at that moment she didn't I didn't even like she didn't even like no warning tell you she smoked cigs or like oh nah. smoke a cig like she just nah just boom there and i and i'm like i like just like trying to process everything that's occurring and she was like what's up and i was like i, I was like couldn't find you you know and then Rest of the night finished out quite nicely. It was a great time. But anyway, regardless, hinge women, different breed. Different breed. Out, out of the ordinary. Great change of pace. But oh my gosh. Did you just, smoke a cig with her? No, I did not. This was at the time where I was completely like clean. So I like didn't do anything. So I was like, how old? Yeah. She had to be older. She sounds older. She was 32. Yep. Sounds about right. Yeah. But let's get to the sports now. But yeah, that's what we think. You know, there's our quick rundown on the dating apps if you're. Newly out of college, looking to get some butt. Mm. Or a respectable woman to marry you. Just kidding. That's like a less than one. You have a better chance. No, do people get uh, relate? I know people that get in relationships through dating apps now. It's, do you it's, think they lie? It's 2023, dude. Yeah, but oh, do you yeah, think they you, definitely lie. But yeah. yeah. Like if you re- like if you realistically I have a friend whose sister just got married off of a Tinder. They dated for like three, four years. But but do they openly admit that, or is that just because like you have a close insider? To well, the yeah, I don't know. That is true. I, that is, like that's like when they recite, right. like when they were reciting wedding vows, they're not like well, I, I remember I the day on I your profile. Sight. Yeah, like I remember when I saw that beach pic on your profile. Like, I do think I do think it's um it is a little like strange like that. Like it's a little like oh that's a little weird. I also kind of understand it though because like I don't really go out anymore. I just hang out with my same like group of seven friends, and I train i i fight i have this i coach and i have a job i don't have time to be going out and trying to meet, talk to girls all the time it's very convenient to like go on every 20 minutes before you go to bed and try to meet girls yeah not only that i just i feel like whenever i'm out at a bar or any public setting where like the engagement with the opposite sex is prominent among you i feel like my number one fear isn't rejection it's the girl that thinks she is like always getting sexually harassed for some reason. Like you go to say hi and she's like, you're raping me. Like get the fuck away. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. We have a like, very different experiences. I mean, I'm, I've never been accused thankfully, but I've been around areas where like girls will just snap on guys just for like trying to start conversation. And I will like, I'm like, mm, not for me. Sorry. I'm like, I'm more of the uh, luck into it kind of guy. Dude, I'm, just, I'm just terrible at talking to girls in public. Yeah. Not, not in public, going out. Because yeah. my mind is just like, dude, every guy's already hit on them. Like, I'm not tall or rich. Like, I don't have, like, many things to, to do this. And I was like, I don't really – like, I don't know. I just feel like it's, like, redundant. Like, every guy's hitting on them. Every guy's trying to bang them. Like, it's just like, ugh. And on top of that, I, I, I'm just so weird to, like, walk up and be like, hey. I'm more of, like, a random random thing or, like, we already kind of know each other kind of guy. Yeah, I I think the new wave is we got to start walking up to them and just freestyling. Like you just got to spit a rap, and they're like, "Damn, that was hard." And you're like, you're like, "Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I do. That's what I do." Yeah, I don't have any like party tricks other than that like water bottle shit. Like, yo, you want to see me chug a water bottle in a second? Just, it's like right in front <laughs> yeah, of yeah, but then you like, can't talk to them for like five minutes. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> just like dying in the corner, like water's coming out of my nose, like can't breathe. I think you still do that trick? I don't want to try it. That's what you're asking. I'm just, that's not what I'm asking. I'm just saying, do you think you can? I think, you know, now that you bring it up, I think if I were to ever do to do like a challenge video for like a fraternity or something along those lines, I feel like I would fill it with vodka and try to do it. I think it would kill me. Could. I don't think I you think, could. You think it'd kill me? I don't think you could get it all down. I think, I think you'd be like, <laughs> and then stop it. Yeah. It I would feel like you would. We'd have, you'd have to throw up. You'd have to pull trigger. Yeah, you'd have to. And then you just snort fire ants and then end up on a thousand ways to die. Great show, by the way. I haven't, I don't know why that came to mind. That was very weird, but <laughs> yeah, that's a good uh, show though. But anyways, show. let's get back to what people come here to tune in for sports. I know you had a very, uh, 
conversational starter you wanted to have about the SEC, Zach? Yes. So for those of you that are unaware of what is occurring within SEC football, um, recently what happened was the SEC committee had a meeting with all their teams and they were trying to decide how many in-conference games they would have for this upcoming season. Because, you know, with all the teams coming in with Oklahoma and Texas, you know, they're just trying to figure out how many in-conference games they're going to play. And, you know, you would think with the powerhouse, like the SEC, they would want to prove their greatness against one another. So you would think like, you would think like 10 games would be a really strong showing for the SEC. Just battle it out against one another and just make for great football. Instead, it took them months to decide that they will do an eight game conference schedule. So they're going to have four, they're going to have four out of conference games. Get this. They abolish divisions. It's now just one conference. I fuck with that though. It sucks. It a lot sucks. Of games I like, but it's way more straightforward. Like Alabama would, could have been in the playoffs last year. There are only four teams that voted for a nine plus schedule. Uh, yeah, a nine plus in conference schedule. And those teams were Texas A&M, Missouri, Florida. And there's one other. I'm for, I think Ole Miss. So they wanted nine. They wanted nine. To they ten. wanted more. They wanted more. All the other SEC schools voted no. So they're a bunch of betas. Um, and I if I saw correctly, there was only like either four or ten. There was either, I think either four or ten teams in the SEC that have that. Yeah, I think it was like super low number that have a non that have a, a a non that have a power five opponent as a uh as a uh out of conference game it was like yes super low so get this so get this of all the power five conferences over 75 percent i think it is of the like of every conference has power five non-conference opponents like it's like 13 out of 14 for the big 10 it was like oh I, that's um, what i saw yeah that's yeah 12 and 14 ACC led, ACC led, I think. Yeah, ACC may have been above Big Ten. SEC, two of the 14 schools have non- That's what it was. Power five. No, no, have a power have, five. Have a power five, Yeah, which is a joke. And one That's, is Florida playing Florida State, and then the other one's Georgia playing Georgia Tech. Why? No way. Why? Why? You're the best. You're the best. And what kills me is you go into the comments and you have these SEC dick riders that are just like, oh, yeah, we're 45 and 10 against every other conference. Like, okay, you roll tide looking ass. Like, think about it this way. If you're that good, prove it. Prove it. It shouldn't be a problem. I think, and I think this just goes back to with our, um, our normal argument we talk about all football season, you need to expand the playoff. People are yeah. running because it, this is true. One win, you're out. Or yep. excuse me, one loss, you're out. You're, you're probably not making it. Two losses, you're guaranteed not making the playoff. If you expand it, which they are to eight, you can get in with two losses. There will be probably two to three teams on there with two losses. Yeah. But 100%. so I think you'll see the conference schedule strengthen, especially if you're the number three team in the SEC. <clears throat> Right, yeah. Say so you're Alabama last year, you're, you're ten and two. You're the number three over overall. You're the number three team in the SEC. Like if you like had no conferences, or if you had no divisions, you're the number three team. You had two losses, right? Tennessee loses. Let's say Tennessee loses again to Georgia. So they, you guys, both have two losses. But Alabama has a big win over Michigan in the game in kickoff game, or or fucking USC or somebody, right? Yeah, that's gonna help them jump another conference champion if that conference champion sucked in my opinion yeah that's where i think it's gonna happen but right now with four it they're just like dude it's too it's too scary because the the, the sec is the best conference in college football yeah. and it's annoying but it is but they're too scared to play any big games now because of the fact that they're like oh well if we lose two games we're done we can't make the playoffs so i think that's one i think that's the reason why I'm not yeah. agreeing with it. I'm just saying that's – I think that's the reason for what we're seeing. 
Yeah. I just, you can't, how do I formulate this in the best way? The way I see it is you can't be scared to lose if you're gunning for gold. You should want to be the guy to stand up and say, if you want to win the title, you got to come through me. Like I'm not handpicking my opponent. Now look, I completely understand the one to two games in November against the very small schools that you're paying a lot of money to give them the exposure, to give them the chance against stronger schools that really help out those programs. I understand those games. That is not what we're referring to. We're referring about the three or four other games that they're just playing your, I can't, I don't really want to say Citadel. Cause like that's, I'm talking, cool. I'm talking like week one, week ones through three. Yeah. Like those weeks, those are the weeks. Yeah. Four yeah. sometimes, but week one through three. When you're playing yeah. FCS North and FCS West and the NCAA Dynasty. Yeah, like, why? Like, you can help out one to two schools, but then, like, as soon as you have those tune-up games, you're done tuning up. You're ready to play. You don't need you don't need two tune-up games. You, you don't even really need one. We have a spring game for a reason. Like, and I know that's, like, so far out from fall, but regardless, like. I do think there should be one, one off-season NCAA game, like high school football. Oh, where it's just like doesn't like count against an yeah, exhibition. That, yeah, next the, the opening week of college football should be not count, and then you would see crazy matchups. Yeah, like sure, like if and even if they implemented the rule set, like hey, like once you touch the quarterback, like we're gonna mark him down, like like we don't want anyone getting super hurt, but we're still not gonna take away like the aspect of the game. Yeah, maybe maybe the exhibition is where you people try out. Your... People wouldn't play to win. They'd play just a stunt and it'd be fucking fun to watch. Yeah. Not only that, but wouldn't that be the perfect time to test out rule imp- implementations? Like if you're actually going to try out new rules, why not actually have a game environment where you can test the rules rather than they just have them. They have a board meeting every year. They come up with these new rules and they roll out the first game and the refs are like, Oh shit. They're like, I don't They're like, I've never seen that in game. So I don't know how to call it. Like, also, wow. dude, like we talk about it in wrestling and MMA, like there's, there's, we call it room world champions, like guys yeah. that are just unbelievable in practice. But when the spotlight hits them, they shit a brick. There's no, there, like you can scrimmage all you want and do a spring game. There's nothing as the same that will ever come to actually when it's game time. And that wow. helps coaches and guys get that first game jitters out. You know, even if it doesn't count, you get those first game jitters out. You get to see as a coach, yeah. So, uh, Johnson at wide receiver was nasty in practice. As soon as the spotlight hit him, he shit a brick. He's not our guy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, there, it's very beneficial. Like you said, the injuries are scary. You can do like, just touch the quarterback. Like it just fucking make it fun for the kids, but also like, like get that first round out. Yeah. Cause it sucks. Like when you're out Alab- when you're fucking, you know, whoever you are and you're open, like LSU and Florida state, that's their first game. They get no jitters out. They get a top fucking Maybe five, a guaranteed 10 matchup week one. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't get those jitters out. You don't get that warm up round. Yeah. I would say the best way to do it is just let the refs have a quick whistle. Like, you're not really going to argue too much about like penalties and shit like that. Like, just if a play can be called dead, just call it dead as it is. They're not going to complain because it doesn't count against them. You like, run it just like a spring game. Yeah. You you just, the same way. Yeah. Run it. Just run it. And then, like, for matchup wise, Obviously, you don't want to face anyone in conference or any potential opponents you're going to see throughout the year. But, like, why not just showcase, like, an SEC versus an ACC, ACC school? Put a Big Ten against a Pac-12 team. Put, like, yeah, give us also, matchups. It opens give up, us matchups you never see. Yeah, like that, 100%. It also opens up the doorway for strategic factors as well. If I'm fucking – I'm an SEC school, right, and I'm playing a super fast-paced Pac-12 team – opening the game opening the season or like th- week three probably going to schedule a pretty fast team pack 12 team that's not them in my ex- whatever game when i say the word ex- ex- exhibition exhibition i always say expedition exhibition yeah. you schedule you're playing oregon you're like damn they're fast i don't know what to do let's schedule usc in the in the in that game yeah we can't lose and also it gives our guys a couple reps with some faster guys yeah Literally. I mean, or even then, like you could just, let's say you're playing a Pac-12 school. You know that like w- Washington state or something runs like an air raid, find another air raid school program in the country. And you're like, Hey, let's give, let's test it. Like maybe we'll use our exhibition game to test out our defense. Maybe we'll use it to test out our offense. Like try out new plays, different playbooks. Like we want to see how this play looks live. Like yeah. it's the perfect opportunity to just showcase shit. And like, it gives 
not football fans love nothing more than a reason to talk shit and that like that's like the perfect shit talking opportunity yeah. and then they could scout just- it's scout team but not with your fucking walk-ons with uh, uh with the starters of another team yeah and sure players might sit out or be like this is pointless to me like sure but then you have guys that are like fighting their ass off for a roster spot or like a second string guy trying to prove he's a first string guy and he gets a shot but like we say Injuries are a part of sports. It's always a risk to take. And I still think I think it made, would be electric because you would see guys that are like that two or three rise up and get that one. Yeah. And if yeah. you do it like a spring game, bro, I'm pretty sure you can't bring it to the ground. You're just supposed to wrap. Yeah. Like, well, FA, FAE was hitting the shit out of each other. We didn't have but either way, if you do it like a spring game, bro, if you do it like a spring game, it's way more gentle. Yeah. I wouldn't say gentle, just not as – it's not as violent. They're they're violent, but like there's a word for it. I'm looking for Control. it's almost yeah. You're you're controlling them in the aspect of like you're not out there to like make like an explosive hit. You're more just like fundamental. You're fundamentally sound. Yeah, and all regards. and you know you don't have to win, so you're not gonna like overdo something that's gonna cost you like a hurt or something. You know. Yeah, but. I think we've exhausted this part, but you know, you brought up an interesting point about how teams, not only the SEC, but around the league are trying to like just avoid losing two losses. Cause that kind of knocks you out. And one sport that completely changed their dynamic of how they do their rankings and seedings was NCAA baseball this year. Well, not just this year, but they've been doing it the uh, last two, three years. Um, it's, and they go, newer, right? yeah, it's called the RPI system. And I've, I want to get the acronym correctly. So RPI baseball. Uh, it's it's a newer ranking system though. Like it's not like brand brand new, but it's like within right, the it's, decade. It's your it's your rating percentage index. So what they do is it's it ranks teams wins and losses. It doesn't just rank your wins. So based off that, it looks at your quality of opponents. And it looks at your opponent's opponents. So if your opponents have played good teams and they've also played you and they like, they notice like trends among teams, that's how you get your rankings. And there's been some backfire over recent years. And especially this year that people didn't like a lot. For example, you look at Indiana state who is hosting a regional. Yeah. Everyone thought was dog water. What's their like, record? Are they like at least solid? They're there's They do the same thing every year. This is the issue with them. They play in a soft conference, don't play a ton of crazy out of conference games, but because they're so dominant in their own conference. They're like Wichita State in basketball. Yeah. yeah. They just run it, get into regionals, host regionals. And then even today, they're about to lose to Wright State. Damn. So it's the same thing. Like, sure, your RPI is flawed. Obviously, there's no perfect way to rank teams overall, but, you know, I do like it a little bit better. Like, Wake's the number one team in the nation and they're in the ACC. You know, obviously they had the best record in baseball, but even then, like they played some of the toughest opponents year round and continued to dominate, like regardless. I saw and that Campbell, all... Campbell had the 10th hardest out of conference uh, schedule in the country. Mm-hmm. And even though their record wasn't like amazing, they still were held in a high regard in the top 25 just because their RPI was so strong. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's how they do it. You, you kind of get rewarded for not for you get rewarded for not running from the big guys. Yeah. Like if no. you if, if you go and play the big boys, like you kind of like it kind of rewards you because it's like, oh yeah, you lost that game, but like you fucking played it. Yeah. It's it's more so whereas like your wins like game to game wins aren't as important. Just win the series. Like you need to win, like show that you are the better team in the series. Like it's okay to have your one or two game slip up. Like you're playing other great teams. They're yeah. going to win. They're going to take some from you. Like that's how it is. But like, I'm personally a fan of the system. Obviously there's some teams that get blessed on it. Just there's never of, been an undefeated team ever. And baseball. Yeah. But no, never. No college, not pro. Yeah. Never. How many games um, do they play in college? It God, used to be, be it so used to hard. be like it used to be like 80 something. Now it's uh 50 or 60. Damn. Yeah, it's ish. possible to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean everyone's fucking good. Um let me see the best 
winning seasons, best college baseball winning seasons. Uh, 1986, Arizona won 58 games in a season. Um, in 1972, Oregon State went 64 and six. Damn. Yeah. So I know Wake's on the verge of breaking the record. Let me look at Wake's win loss this season. I think they have nine or ten losses and like forty some wins. Yeah, like forty nine and ten, I think. Forty seven and ten. Damn! Look at that, bro. Yeah, they're nice. They are very nice indeed. Um. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on the RPI though? You you fuck with it or you don't? I like it. It's just flawed, but at the same time, you need to have like some fundamental baseline. Like you have to have. Is like, there definitions of their rules or no? It's it's kind of like in Division One basketball with like their quartile one wins. Like NCAA basketball system is really good. I like how they do theirs. It's just if you have the most quartile one wins, then like you're considered good. The way they do their quartiles is like the top top like thirty or some top thirty something teams in the country are quarter one. Below that, the next fragment's quarter two, and it goes all the way down to quarter four or quartile four. And then you just like kind of, I forget the like math behind it, but you know, the biggest issue with like having mathematical systems is you have to have a baseline, like a consistency. Like there has to be one team that's like your X factor that like either everyone has played or that like everyone at least shares like some relevancy of a common mm -hmm. opponent. That way you can have like a basis for your formula. All theirs is pretty much, they do the formula based off the preseason how they view teams and like they they kind of adjust it. As I hate. The season I goes think on. preseason rankings shouldn't exist, dude. It's so biased. It's yeah, but like there's if nothing's happened. How can you tell me who's better? It's just the way the way that I see it is like you have to have a starting point somewhere, and the best evidence you have is like your most recent. Like you know what I mean? Like when they're looking at it. Like yeah, sure. but see teams win national titles and they start the season at like eleven, like Clemson. yeah, yeah, because they're going, they're doing that based off of all right. A lot of these guys were sophomores and juniors, are going to be seniors now. They should get better theoretically. Or this they lost team, guys, the draft or something. Yeah, they lost guys to the draft, or they lost a guy that was responsible for sixty percent of their productivity on offense or defense. Like, obviously, you're going to take. That's why hit. wrestling is so elite, bro. It's just, did you beat this guy or did you lose to this guy? Yeah. There's no like, well, there's no, 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 no. Did you win or did you lose? You lost. All right. He's getting a higher ranking than you. Yeah. And then if it's, if it's like, uh, example, 141 was, uh, uh Allerys from Northern Colorado. Like he didn't wrestle the number two guy. So it was like, all right, how, who has more ranked wins? Who has more wins by bonuses? Yeah. Like, it, it's so straightforward. Like, no one, people get a couple, like, like one through four, people are like, what the fuck? But after that, everyone's like, you know, like, like you, you deserve that ranking. Like, yeah, and, and the big saying in wrestling is too, and I like that you brought this up, is um you you have to if if you get a bad draw, they're saying is you just have to beat them in the bracket to win the title anyways. Yeah, you have to beat everyone in the bracket. Yeah. You're not the yeah. best because of your route. You're the best because out of every single name on that bracket, you're the one that won it. You got to beat the bracket. Yeah, what I, what's also harder for me is in individual sports, it's very acclimated for rankings and stuff like that because you're going based off one individuals. In team sports, it's very difficult to do oh, it. Yeah, that that's, that's why it's straightforward. But I'm saying that's why it's goaded too. Yeah. Like matchups play a huge part. Like when people make arguments like, oh, well, they didn't have to face this team in the first round. Like they would have been a lot tougher draw for them. Like, yeah, sure. That's true. But like these things happen for a reason. Like, it, like luck plays a huge part in team sports, whether you like it to or not. Like no one, we're not like all symbiotes on the field like we don't read each other's minds and know what's going to happen like fluke happens like you want to talk about luck go look at the 2013 uh season and tell me auburn didn't have three or four of the luckiest football games of probably all ever, time ever and, and still almost took down one of the greatest football teams that ever touched turf in that florida state team mm -hmm. but kelvin benjamin before he was eating popeye's biscuits was him yeah he was him i think yeah, that was team was. I I could we could do a whole podcast on that season. 
Yeah, for Easily. sure. Like, um, like eighth grade Grayson would be going crazy. <laughs> There's so many crazy things that I could probably talk about, about some of the seasons I remember from certain sports. It's kind of wild. Um, You know, we were talking about it before the podcast about how we're kind of in like a sports purgatory. You know, we're, we're in the NBA finals, but we're not big basketball fans. You know, we're in the middle of baseball season, but we're not close enough to the MLB deadline to kind of be excited about it. It's kind of just like you're – we're in that long part of the season right now. Yeah, we're in the long, dull part. And, you know, this this would be the time of year where I would find myself on, like, ESPN 8, the Ocho, watching, like, cornhole tournaments or something along those lines. So I've decided to come up with a weird little segment that we could kind of dive into right here. What are some sports that maybe you wouldn't want to see year-round, but you wouldn't mind watching – once in a while or tune it into for like a couple minutes out of your day. I think my number one, and I, it's actually like legit, but I, it doesn't get covered is free climbing. Mm. I would watch the sh- I, I do watch it. It's, it's, I don't know if you could put that on TV though. Yeah. A lot of risk there. Um, maybe you just have, <laughs> Maybe you have a cutoff point where, like, once they drop below a certain portion of the screen, it's like, don't track it, don't track it. Yeah, no, but maybe, maybe you have that one camera off to the side that's going to be like, whoop. Isn't but, there like an eight second delay, though, from live to television that's not pay per view? So, yeah. So like, oh, why'd the screen go black? Mommy, change channel. Yeah. <laughs> um, my number one is going to be darts. I don't know if you've seen any yeah, of those darts TikTok is video. Lit, dude. Darts is lit. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen those videos of them in Ireland where they're doing like uh the five ones against each other and they're like, he's on a nine. No, no, dude, no, darts is dope. I like I fuck with darts heavy. Yeah, darts goes extremely hard. Um, very bar oriented sport. Um, but that's kind of how my thought was going there. That's kind of a sport I would tune into for a while just to like maybe get two seconds like, yeah. Like I'm gonna go play darts now, but give me a give me a the the wood shit they do when they like chop the wood and they like they have the ah, wood competitions you know what I'm yeah. talking about the lumber competitions the, yeah the lumberjack competitions yeah lumberjack right. competitions yeah I can yeah. watch I can watch I'm the shit call, out of that I'm gonna call it lumberjacking that sounds like a uh, yes that sounds better yeah that sounds like a misconstrued sex term um but you know I don't have the definition for that one my number two you know I'm gonna stick with the bar scene. Not so much billiards, but if you've ever watched Snooker, Snooker is a no. very interesting, very interesting to watch. Um, there are some demons on there. Um, the so the difference between billiards. You got to tell me what the hell you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, same premise. You play on a pool table, but they're the pockets are different. So in pool, you have very wide pockets compared to snooker snooker it's very round and narrow like you literally have to hit the ball perfect for it to go in the hole so bounce um, shots don't happen no they do but it's just goaded they're goaded um also the way it starts out is all the balls are red all the balls are red the center ball is black and then you have four or five balls in the back line that are each different color I every think seen, i think i've seen shit like this every time you make a red ball in you have to make the black ball in. And there's only one black ball. So you have to perfectly line your shots. you be like, I'm going to make this red, and then I'm going to knock this black in, and then I'm going to knock that red, and then it's going to set me up for my next red. And then after you do all that, then you have to hit all the color balls in, and then you finish on black. And you get, like, points for every one you do. I think each red ball this is worth, sounds like, hard as hell. Yeah, there are some demons that play it. And it's so strategic because, like, they can see every shot on the board, but when they know they can't make a shot, they're like, all right, I have to place this ball – where then he can't make a shot. And then obviously you have some boring moments where like, they're just like setting each other up and you have resets yeah. and stuff like that. But it is, it's one, it's like a golf game in my head. Cause like, it's very, everyone is dead silent watching. Like they, there's not a fucking noise when they play because they're just locked in. And I forget the guy's name. Um, Cause I, I literally, my entire YouTube feed uh, used to just be this guy. He's nasty with it. Oh my god, gotta, gotta Ronnie, up. Ronnie, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Ronnie O'Sullivan, Ronnie literally, O'Sullivan. really, literally, go home, watch Ronnie O'Sullivan highlights wherever you're listening to this app. It's gonna make you like think you can play snooker, and then you're gonna realize that this man is a god. This man, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Hold on, let me. 
yeah, he's the world number one, most accomplished and talented. He's won the world. He's pretty much won the World Series seven times. I um, bet he makes like no fucking money though. Probably not. Probably not. Let me. He's, you know what? He's touched a woman in his life. I mean, if you saw him, <laughs> he kind of looks like. Damn, who does he look like? He looks like a way more British version of Willy Wonka. Like, just like uber British. Good for him, man. Is he British? Yeah. Yes. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think that uh, that wraps us up for random sports. Number two, Zach Watts, any comments or questions to end us off? Um, thought. Oh, little inspirational quote of the day. Um, I, I, I read this today. I want to make sure I get it right. Raise your words, not your voice. It's the rain that grows the flower, not the thunder. Damn. I like that. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Um, yeah. yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.